All right, all right, all right, and welcome back to another exciting episode of the Planet Gen X podcast. My name is Sean, and that over there is Brian, and by God, I am so happy to be here today. It's really stupid. We had to take a week off last week because we had some testicular difficulties, and uh, yeah, it was a power outage. That's all there is to it, so what can yeah. you do, man? It just happens. <laughs> It's just one of those things it was. So, yeah, we just decided to forego the week. We deserve a break every now and then. And uh, there's only a few people watching, it seems. So I don't think they minded too much. Yeah, we're still dialing it in a little bit. Yeah, yeah. It's all good, man. We can come back with a fury today. So how was your week? How you been? I am excellent. It's been a lot less hectic week than it was last week, so it was kind of welcome that we didn't do a podcast because <laughs> it was crazy last week. But uh, yeah, it's all good, all good in the hood, man. So uh, you, you're doing all right. I'm okay, man. I, I had a few things to do last week that di didn't quite uh, fulfill me as much as I had expected to. But yeah, that doesn't mean I'm not doing all right. Right on, man. You gotta find the positive in everything. At least I gotta try, try to man. Yeah. You gotta find the silver lining. There's always one. If you look real hard, it's there. And while you're looking real hard, make sure you hit that subscribe button, guys. Thank you so much. Anywho, man, I tell you what, there was this game. I love pirates so much. Very much so. I've always loved them. And when the Pirates of the Caribbean came out, it was just, you know, spectacular times. And uh Funnily enough, though, I don't really play the pirate video games that have been out there, but I figured when this Skull and Bones game came out that that would be one that I would, you know, probably check out. It might be something worth, you know, getting into. It's one of those that has had an eternity in development. Um, it has its roots in the uh, um, Assassin's Creed series, the Black Flag series. In fact, a number of them, right, had different... Uh, like naval scenes where you could where you could do uh ship battles and stuff yeah so yeah it's like you you expect because of the way black flag was received that they knew what they were doing and uh the game ended up coming out recently i don't remember when it's a few days ago and it is pretty much just utter garbage <laughs> um it seems like it's typical of a lot of games where they're coming out and they're just going to get finished at some point, but not right, right away. Um, and there was aspects like to you it. have your wish list on the wall, and it's like, here's what we can release with, right? Yeah, right. Yeah, let's try and get this stuff out first, and then it's a it's a game kinda, and right. uh, you know we'll add the cool parts later. We'll just reel them in now. Um, yeah, and then there's like the things I saw, like watching the videos. It looks it looks good. But the the women on the boat were incredibly annoying. And I don't know if you always start with women or whatever, but the, everyone I seem to check out when you started out, you have like all these women pirates on board, which let's leave, you know, whether uh, men are better than women type thing out the door right now, just for the sake of pirate lore or, or just, just, just naval tradition in general, women are bad luck on ships. And it would not have been tolerated. I'm just going to say that right now. So having an all-female crew or whatever was taking it a little bit out of historical uh, context or whatever. It, uh, I've got two segues I could pull from that. Yeah. One of them is obviously, uh, what is it, Gemini? is having problems. Yeah. Uh, apparently it's overcorrecting on cultural standards. Yeah. Like, uh, uh, giving AI images, like say you wanted an Elon Musk image, you're going to get uh, you know, brother Musk. He, well, yeah. no, not quite. I mean, it, it's like, you know, traditional colonial blah, blah, blah. And then it's got like, you know, obviously raises that don't involve in, aren't involved in the question of what you're asking um, because it's honestly, I think it's overcorrection. I think it, it's, it, it's something that it's trying to say, okay, we, we have to, you know, include, we can't be exclusive. Mm, so yeah. that's not in the programming. Um, so I don't know. 
yeah it's 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 crazy uh how how over the top it is and that's just putting it mildly right but yeah so skull and bones well, man like uh i don't know it's uh, a failing in ai uh, is what i was gonna say but yeah uh skull and bones that sucks uh you know i often i spent many a halloween as a pirate one of my younger years was this one on your radar uh, yeah, I mean, it was something that I kind of looked at, but I haven't really kept up with. Uh, to be honest, as far as games are concerned, I think that's our, our main gaming thing, yeah. Uh, we have one more thing about gaming you want to talk about, but I was going to bring up uh, our our mutual friend is probably most likely playing a game that I re really didn't have a chance to check out until today. It's gotten a lot of uh, attention and popularity, and it's Helldivers 2. Yeah, uh, and I, I I had no idea. I was like, okay, it's just something that people are obviously enjoying for whatever reason because there's nothing else going right now. Uh, turns out it's basically a Starship Troopers game. Oh yeah, I had yeah. it. I just deleted it. I had oh, yeah? I needed the hard drive space bad because uh, uh, I, Pacific Drive came out, dude. Right, and I was uh, I had been seeing that was on my radar big time. I'd been seeing a lot of things on that in the past month, and it finally came out. And I sent you a link about it, and I mean, I'm just like, wow, this game is pretty damn awesome. And it sucks too because I'm on top of playing this game that's not that old, but it's not a brand new game. It's uh, Day is Gone, oh, yeah. which is the game I had been trying to find. I thought that game that it came out recently, um, the day after or whatever, the one that failed before. miserably the day before, yeah. That's the game I thought I was wanting. I'd seen a trailer a while back, and I couldn't remember the name, but it had Day in the title. And so I came across the day before, and I was like, yeah, that kind of looks like what I saw, kind of. And uh, no, but so I, I I don't know how. I guess I saw another like playthrough or something. And I was like, well, that that looks a lot like what I've been wanting. And, and sure, that's the actual fucking game. So I played that a little bit. Love it, dude. The day, yeah. the, um, what did I say? Shit. Now I'm getting my days confused. Uh, well, I think I corrected days, you two days before, but was it days before or days gone? or Days gone I, is the one I'm loving. Right, yeah. And the day, the day before or the day after is that failed game. Right. Yeah. But uh, yeah, Days Gone, man, great freaking game. I think it came out in twenty one. Sounds about right. Yeah, but it's it looks great. Uh, so far, the story's really great. So I am so torn right now between Pacific Drive and that. You know, right. I, had to, I had to take Red Dead Redemption off. I wasn't playing it, and I needed the hard drive space bad. And yeah, I had the Hell Divers too. And I'm like, well, I guess you got to go because I'm right now. I got two games that are really. You know, grabbing my attention, and there's no way I can wedge a third in there. I am. I was just, in fact, I was just telling my wife the other day about how uh, I haven't. I don't remember the last time I finished a fucking game. Uh, right, <laughs> dude. I, strikes again. Oh my god, dude. Like, yeah, it's bad, but it's not only that. I started thinking about it. It's not fair, dude, but because of the way they release games. I mean, it's just like you don't even get a chance. Um, I'm not the kind of player that can knock a game out in a couple days, man. It's just not happening. And I'm and I know there's a lot of guys out there that do it. They they get through these games quick and it's fine. They can deal with the the game release uh, schedule. I cannot. Right. <laughs> well, I mean that was one thing that I, I kind of thought about trying to do differently in my gaming experience because I, you know, for me uh, a you know eighty hour game or whatever uh, that is you know most people say yeah you'll finish this in eighty hours which is plenty of content generally yeah easily 200 300 hours for me if i'm into it right yeah um yeah, yeah if the game's so, right and done right you can get a lot of play time out of it yeah i think i did that with witcher right yeah. witcher 3 oh yeah uh hundreds of hours in that game just chilling right right yeah i've still yet to try that one i've got it it's it's stacked away somewhere waiting to be looked at and i just never have gotten there again i can't keep up yeah. Um, I'm wanting to put Hogwarts Legacy on the computer instead of on my Xbox and, and replay that and start over from the beginning and play it. But I'm just, I can't do it, man. I mean, it's like, ah, pulling myself apart with, with all this shit. 
So my idea was basically, you know, if I'm going to get into another game, I have to start playing objectively as opposed to just, you know, soaking in the world and, and just, you know, oh, this is so great. I love this, everything. Um, you know, make make goals of the game and like, you know, try try to get through it in a particular fashion as opposed to, yeah. well, I got to. I got to turn over every stone in this room, right? Oh, yeah, dude. It's hard when you're like wanting to make sure you don't miss a thing, man. I like to cover every base. I know you do too. Same. Yeah. Yeah. Oh, it's, it's rough. And it's funny because this is Skull and Bones, which has got, a, which is, you know, where we started with this topic. Uh, mm -hmm. You know, it, it, they were, I guess, self, self titling themselves as quadruple A title right. or whatever, which, you know, yeah. just even makes it just insult to injury. Because if you're going to call kind of bullshit like that out, you better be ready to back it up, man. And they just have not backed it up. But, you know, they'll there's high probability that they'll get it to a state where it might be enjoyable a year from now or something like that. Yeah. But, well, I mean, we've seen that a lot with games here yeah. recently. You know, they'll, sure they'll release something lackluster. Um, now, interesting, interestingly... Uh, what it's done, it's allowed these sneakers like Helldivers 2 and Pal World to just pop out of nowhere yeah. and, you know, still, still the show. Yeah, and grab the attention of everyone for a while. Yeah. Um, fuck, I forgot where I was going to go. Oh. That's no. all right. <laughs> Speaking of gaming, Xbox did reveal their plans. Right. Which, you know, pretty much was of what some expected and a lot less than the internet made out to be obviously but i think in the long run many people are going to be right i think this yeah. is just the baby the, the beginning the sticking your big toe in the water to see what it's like yeah you know, they're going to try it out they didn't throw any big titles out there that really were going to hurt them well, well you got to hit us with the plan uh well i mean like they're gonna they're gonna do like what the uh, the exclusivity on like Hi Fi Rush is gone. And uh, wasn't it that game that we were talking about that I didn't even know the name of? It was like the Pentiment or something like that. I think that it was it. Yeah, it may have been it. I, I remember something like that you um, mentioned. It. We were both kind of like, what the hell even is that? <laughs> yeah, I don't even remember all the games. Dude. It was like four, four titles they talked about. None of them, I was like, it. I mean, like Hi Fi Rush, I think was the only one I really was like, okay, I've, I've heard of that. Did you know of any of the other ones? See, I mean, yeah. you guys, you can everybody can see. There's a thousand videos on this shit, so you know, right. I just figure everybody already knows. Yeah, I recognize most of them outside of the the one that we were like. What yeah, the, what the I thought that was it? a joke uh, at first. So uh, they're dipping their toe into what? Oh, just like the exclusivity thing, like you know, letting their game titles go out to Nintendo and and PlayStation and stuff like that. Right. And uh, trying to get more market share, I guess. Yeah. Um, you know, I think the thing where most people think they're going is like, you know, a, a more, like I said, Microsoft Game Pass instead of Xbox Game Pass type deal mm -hmm. where their games are just on every platform eventually. You know, that whole thing where people are saying they may give up the console, maybe, maybe they do. And it's just not right now. Maybe. Well, we'll see. It didn't turn out to be too much of anything, really, but, uh, you know, the main game that people were wondering about was Starfield and the Indiana Jones game, right? And that was the main right. two that she directly asked him about, and he could he could categorically say, no, they are not going to be the two games. So, you know, yeah. I don't think it matters about Starfield. That was actually one. That's where I was going to go a minute ago with uh, the Skull and Bones thing was like Starfield is one, you know, do you think it can be saved? I think everybody's given up on it so much. I don't even think anybody cares to save it. Well, that that's what I was going to say. It it theoretically it could have been saved, but it's too late now, right? And they've had a ton of updates too, but what has it been for? Yeah. Apparently for nothing. Well, I mean, you look at things like Baldur's Gate and Cyberpunk and what did they do? They they did big pushes, they apologized profu profusely, organized events and had major crunch crunch times at the offices to polish up the product and deliver what was promised. Yeah. 
Um, the edge runner thing didn't hurt for cyberpunk either. Right. That's true. Yeah. Um, but that's kind of what you have to do in that situation. If you fail, if you don't cross the finish line, uh, like you, you plan to, you have to have, uh, a timeline, obviously, uh, in order to deliver specifics, it doesn't have to be everything, but it's gotta be what the community wants. Uh, but you also have to have the PR campaign aspect of it as well to, you know, to connect with your potential audience and be like, hey, we're sorry, we're working hard, we do want to deliver this to you, but then you got to deliver. <laughs> yeah, yeah, it matters. I mean, like, yeah, if you if you step up and, and own your shit, people will respect you way more. Yeah, definitely. I think we saw that with both those games. Yeah, no doubt. Um. Of course, the Apple Vision Pro, man, still all over the place. People are, you know, constantly doing new reviews and stuff, and a lot of people are getting their time in on it. But uh, I ran across an interesting little uh, YouTube short that was showing one of the biggest problems with it that people are having now is that there's this arrow that comes up on the front of the goggles where it's got like a computer or like a screen and a little arrow pointing to it. And uh, it's basically telling you, hey, you need to connect to a computer. Well, there is no way to connect the Apple Vision Pro to a computer. Unless you pay 99 bucks, become a developer, and then you can get the $300 dongle that you can attach to this thing to allow you to connect it to a computer. Right. You know, assuming you have a Mac around to even do that with. If you don't, you have to take it to the fine people at Apple to get that taken care of. Also, if you lose your password for any reason, you have no way to reset it. The only people that can reset it is Apple. It's Apple, man. They they have always been a pain in the ass. Yes. Right? Yep. So enjoy your Apple products, your niche products. Yeah. I think the the iPhones. The, I was thinking about that earlier because I, I said something about a Apple equals niche to somebody. Because, <laughs> because oh, it was uh, uh, it was Linus. I was just watching the video and he was talking about the uh, Apple Vision Pro, and uh, the other guy. I can't think of his name. He he said something about niche, and I was like, Apple equal niche. You know, I mean that's yeah. what they are, and and. and when I typed it, I did have in the back of my mind, I realized the iPhone, the iPad broke ground, broke out of that mold, I should say, for them. But for the most part, they've always been niche. Well, yeah, I I think we've mentioned it a number of times here, you know, that their whole idea of their product is it's not a machine it's a part of your identity right yeah, yeah. it's like furniture to them man it's like a part yeah. of your you know your yeah like you said well and i'm yeah i'm going back to when it was big computers on desks they want it to be part of furniture but yeah well, you're taking it to the modern level and saying it's part of your ecosystem on your body or something like that well no i just meant like you know even when it was the steves right it was more about like artistic expression and and you know that's what they were focusing on as opposed to what it's actually delivering yeah no doubt uh, not that it delivered poorly i don't think it's just it was like a, a work of art with a computer inside it right yeah yeah and that's the way they price it as well yeah <laughs> but um nvidia is also in the news again they've got a new app coming out this I'm trying to think. I don't know how old Control Panel is. I think it goes back to 2001, maybe. I can't remember. I mean, it's been a long time. It has been a that. long, long time. So yeah. it's finally going to get... So the Control Panel, the uh, NVIDIA Experience, which I actually don't use because I get 10 frames better in my flight simulator, which is huge for me yeah. um, to not have it on there. And uh, whatever, any separate apps that you've had around are all now going into this one NVIDIA app. And it's just called the NVIDIA app. Right. Um, so I know the latest drivers you can get right now uh, allow you, so any beta users have to have these latest drivers for it to work. Um, I'm not going to deal with the beta. I'll wait till they come out with the regular version before I get into all that. But, uh, I mean... 
it looks okay. The user interface is all right. I mean, that's the main thing. They're just they're looking at people like AMD and Intel's interfaces and how slick they look. And they're like, uh, yeah, we probably need to update this, which is crazy considering how much they don't give a shit about gamers, it seems. So I'm surprised right. at this move. So, <laughs> but this doesn't just all, all, you know, it has their uh, Omniverse stuff on it too. Like, it has links to a few things of their other projects that, you know, you can find out if you really look deep on the geforce.com page. Right. Yeah. So, yeah, look for that soon. I'm sure it won't take long before it's out of beta. Those big companies, they can get shit sent. They can get shit done quick. Especially with the earnings that they've been getting recently. I haven't checked the past couple oh, of days, but like all last week at video was just like I know, I think yesterday went up 170 points. Yeah. I think that was yesterday. I may be wrong. But it makes I mean, dude, I like I've always wanted to invest in the stock market and I, I so would have uh, invested in NVIDIA. That's there's no doubt yeah. about it. Well, I mean, you've already said that before, yeah. even before they started ticking up. Oh yeah. I mean so. This is something I've known for years. And Google's the same way. Like, I would have been rich if I had, you know, put on Google back in the day. I knew. I told everybody around me that was going when the IPO happened with Google. I was like, you must buy this. You are stupid if you do not buy into this. Um, But, yeah. So, uh, last, I guess it was the last episode we had. I mentioned the fall of the House of Usher. Was that yeah. the last one? That was uh, not last week, but the last episode. Yeah, not last week. That show uh, ended up being uh, everything. You know, I think when we talked about it, it was only three episodes deep. Well, I've seen the whole thing now, and I was pretty happy with it all. But uh, I had totally forgot to mention at the time that Mark Hamill's in it. Right. And he has uh, his voice. He's just so good with the voices, dude. But the voice he chose for this just is just so low and gruff. Uh, it, it's really great. He, he's he got a great character that you almost just think is the baddest motherfucker on the planet. And it's just so weird when you look at him, you don't get that, that feeling. But when the, the mystique surrounding him and everything else, you just makes you think this motherfucker is not a dude you want to fuck with. Well, I mean, consider the bulk of what he's done. In my opinion, the biggest bulk of his work is as the Joker. Yeah, the Joker, man. Fantastic and that voice. is like, uh, yeah, there's it's a lot of nuance to it. And when people find uh, out it's him, especially back in the day, like they were like, what? You know, it doesn't sound Luke like... Luke Skywalker I mean, is yeah. the Joker? <laughs> yeah, I mean, like, you, you think he doesn't sound anything like that. Well, yeah, it's a fucking voice, but... Right. And, and I mean, like I said, there's a lot of nuance to it. It's difficult, uh, you know, and there's a lot you have to portray in the voice. So, you know, he's got the experience to, to kind of do what he wants with his voice, I think. Yeah, no doubt about it. Uh, and he showed that, you know, it was. I thought it was a great move. I thought it made the character because he's just like, when you see him, Mark Hamill, you instantly think Star Wars. Everybody does. Right. Um, and you probably expect to hear his, like, normal voice, and he chose to go somewhere different with it, and it's awesome, and it fits the character so well, man. So well. Did you uh, even get a chance to watch that yet? I haven't, uh, but you did put it on my radar. That's Netflix, right? I believe that's right. Yeah. yeah, yeah. It's yeah, definitely something you should check out when you get the time, man. Um, it's got other uh, notable people in it. The get the main character in it uh, has been in Star Trek, the like the 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 remake movies, the Kelvin Universe movies. He right. was he was yeah. Captain Pike. I can't think of the actor's name. I know he's. I want to say he's been in um, Pine, Christopher Pine. No, no, no. Right? He played the older Pike. Oh, the older. Okay. I cannot think um, of his name. I want to say he's been at Stargate. He's done a lot of TV, you know, like been on different stuff here and there. Yeah. But when you see him, you'll be like, oh, that guy. And he's even got a mustache, so it's really weird because you, the, our whole lives seeing this guy on TV, he's never had a mustache. So it's right. very weird. Um, it's kind of like seeing um, Sam Elliott without his in um, in um, Justified. Right. So it's an equally weird feeling. Very weird. Well, uh, since we're talking about TV, I, you know, I bought up Helldivers 2 earlier. Uh, there was w one thing I forgot to mention. Apparently, its pop popularity has produced an uptick in viewership of Starship Troopers. So it's kind of like yeah. a, a feedback loop going on. Yeah, like Star uh, the fans of the movie are playing the game and, you know, telling maybe new newcomers about the movie. Well, shit. Dude. I don't know. 
Yeah, because I mean, if it's that much like it, I'm gonna have to. I wish I hadn't gotten rid of it. I, yeah. I just it's it was seventy gigabytes, and that's heavily compressed. So I don't know if uh, you'll necessarily be into it. it. It's kind of one of those fire team type games where you, mm. where you lo- yeah. lobby up or private lobby or whatever. That's yeah. why it got gone because I knew it was on the fringe of what I would like. Right. Yeah. That's what Definitely. I was saying. It doesn't really seem up your. Yeah, and I keep getting it confused with this other one coming out called I think it's called Hellblade, Sinoa Saga or something like that. Right, yeah. Yeah, that I keep getting confused with that and I am wanting to check that out. Because and not because, but because it was on my radar before that, but then I found that I believe High Lung is doing a song in it or, or they they did they have some kind of video with them or something going on, so that kinda interested me too. Um, because it has very much like tribal roots in that game, I guess. Right. Um, I don't know that much about the game, but apparently you know, it's got a what uh, a previous game to it, I guess, because they were talking when I was watching the making of it, uh, like there was been another one. Yeah. Well, I guess that's the two part, isn't it? Yeah. Yeah. I said I that, mean... didn't I? Yeah. I'm sorry. I'm very high, dude. I'm mean, like, <laughs> I got there though. I did get there. I did save it. Yeah. I was so, wondering like where I should have set, segued into there, and I was I couldn't come up with anything. Listen, man, everybody has their moments, and that was mine. What can I say? I definitely, have I'm owning it too. though, bro. I'm owning yeah. it. Yeah. Uh, I can't wait. I'm gonna try these. I got these gummies, man. They're like 450 milligrams. I've only ever tried like one and a half. I won't try two. I'm thinking very seriously if I ever uh, go back to cannabis. I, I, it's going to be strictly gummies. It's just a total different high, dude. It's not really one I like that much. To me, it's like taking a lower tab. If you get enough of it, like to, to where you really feel it, that's what it feels like to me. Well, I mean, it depends on what you're doing, how it's mixed. Like, there's a whole bunch of uh, factors that affect it. Um, for me, uh, I, I don't know. I just. I feel like if I smoke anything these days, my lungs are just kind of like, Argh. yeah, dude, I, there's many days when I have, to, I mean, today even, you know, I've had a couple of times where I'm just like, I'm done for the moment. Right. <laughs> it's like fucking, you know, cheese grater on the old throat. Right. And uh, it's also just like, you know, the idea of, I mean, I don't know about you, uh, but me personally, I, I have, I haven't really been interested in being high in a long time. For me, it's more like, I think you've said this before. It's more like self-medicating. It's Mm -hmm. uh, not about being high. It's about coming down, uh, grounding yourself and being able to not continue to be up here. Right. Yeah. So, Um, yeah, it has many, many medicinal benefits that I believe really help my quality of life. And uh, I think there's enough people out there where it's not so scientific, but it's enough, you know, word of mouth that, you know, hey, there's definitely some benefit to it. And I think well, now I mean, we're getting more scientific data because people are finally able to test this shit where they weren't before. Right. Uh, it's also just kind of like. I'm struggling to to, sure, to form this high. thought, you know, you know how that goes. Um, but I, I guess what I'm trying to get to is uh, obviously we're not dealing with the the same stuff that was around in high school. Nope. Right. Mm-hmm. Uh, and in my opinion, obviously there's a lot of carcinogens involved if you smoke it, and there are other issues. Uh, it doesn't have the physical withdrawal symptoms of uh, other serious drugs. Yeah. But you can still be addicted to it, just not physically. Sure. Right? Oh, yeah. No doubt, bro. No doubt. Um, so I don't know. I think for me, uh, you know, if you could dial it back down, it's great for, like, blood pressure and, like, all kinds of other stuff that Oh yeah, I, I think it my blood pressure is wicked low, like sometimes really too low, honestly. And I, and I constantly at the doctor when the nurses take it, I'm like, it's okay, I'm high right now. <laughs> right. I do. I tell them, I was like, it's cool, I'm high. I'm just really relaxed right now. Because they have well, me sitting like, there for two hours, dude. I have got to go in blazed up. 
Yeah. Well, I know you've been in a situation like I have before where you've been around somebody who was just like on it, right? Like they were freaking out about something or whatever. Yeah. Something big was going on and their blood pressure was up and everything was wrong. And then it's just like, they Here, take, a little toe, yeah. <laughs> take a breath, yep. get up with themselves. Yep. It's it okay. Easy. You know, they realize you're going to live. Yeah. I'm thinking of some good friend of ours who has panic attacks quite often. I think, and I know she never does, but it would probably help her so much in that regard. Yeah. Well, that's the thing about panic attacks is um, they're, they're just there, right? Yeah. You, yeah. you either know it's coming or you don't know it's coming. Yeah. And you can either, you know, do some breathing techniques or something or wham, you're having a panic attack. Yeah. And I don't know if they're as bad as they are for her as they used to be. She's changed her whole lifestyle since then since I knew her from then. Maybe. Uh, so with the health kick she's on now, it might be a total different thing. Yeah. When you change your way of life, those kind of thoughts and stuff that made you do those kind you know, go into those kind of panics, you, you, your mind changes. So it might not even be a thing for her anymore. Maybe. But yeah, but like if you have a problem with that, man, have a little bit in the morning or whatever, you know, whatever you need to even you out throughout the day or whatever. Because like you said, you never know when it's coming on. So it's kind of preventative more more than anything. Yep. But yeah, that's our weed, weed talk for the day, for the week. Got to put it in somewhere, right? Yeah, yeah, yeah. It's important. So uh, anything else for the fine people at home today? I don't think I really got anything, man. I think that's then. Good deal, man. Well, that's another episode in the books. And we thank you guys so much for joining us. And we can't wait until we see you next week for another exciting episode of the Planet Gen X podcast. Guys, thank you so much. As always, be excellent to each other, and we'll see you on the flip side. Thanks, everybody. Oh, yeah, yeah.